PhD students in mechanical engineering, and I'll be presenting our five hour mission for today. And before I get into uh, the startup itself, I'd like to give a quick overview of what uh, drilling for oil and gas is uh, sort of all about, and then I'll get into the startup. So, uh, drilling for oil and gas is a lot like uh, just drilling a hole into your wall, except the process is, uh, or the drill string is basically several kilometers long. <clears throat> so, the main difference is uh, as you uh, drill for a hole, you have fluid that's being circulated uh, into the drill string and up the, up the wall or back to the surface. And uh, this has several reasons. Uh, one is to lift the cuttings from the wall uh, The other one is to cool uh, the drill bit. And another reason is to balance the formation pressures that are being imposed uh, on the hole. After a section of the hole has been drilled, uh, they, uh, they basically lift the entire drill string out of the hole for different reasons. Uh, that could be just changing the drill bit. And this process is called tripping out. So that was uh, basically drilling 101. Now, if you look at the car manufacturing industry today and compare it to uh, how it was 50 years ago, almost nothing looks the same uh, from a manufacturing perspective on, a, uh, on an assembly line, as everything's been automated. But if you look at the drilling industry and compare it to how it was 50 years ago, everything's almost uh, the same. Now, the question that comes up is, is it necessary for automated uh, solutions to be introduced into oil and gas drilling? So to answer this question, we've uh, spoken to oil and gas professionals uh, through surveys and interviews, and uh, several key things that we've seen. There are uh, processes that are inefficient, of both the drilling and the tripping uh, process that I mentioned. As Drilling is often seen by drillers as uh, more of an art than science. So uh, there's inherently inefficiencies involved. And also another source of uh, sort of inefficiencies in the process is what we call non-productive time. And that accounts for about 30% of the total drilling time that's, uh, that takes to drill a wall bore. This non-productive time is basically caused by uh, incidents that uh, could have been prevented, and is the time that make the crew is basically sitting, waiting around for, the, for things to get fixed. So there's this uh, non-productive time is caused by uh, suboptimal operations and human error, and so therefore there's opportunity for automation, but why hasn't automation uh, completely happened yet, uh, given all this resource that's being invested in oil and gas? What we found out is uh, automating a, the drilling process is a lot actually different from traditional automation that goes into things like car manufacturing because one, there's multiple stakeholders involved in drilling a wall bore. Two, uh, the processes are always time varying and changing unlike uh, a car plant where you have cars uh, which are the, the process is the same for every car. And so from a bigger perspective, bad data, whether it's from uh, sensors or from uh, the people that's coming from, uh, hampers the traditional automation. And so uh, that's exactly the problem we're trying to solve with R5 automation. We're introducing a software platform that allows for uh, aggregation of data, development, <coughs> testing, and deployment of various automation products for the oil. So this is basically uh, aggregating data in the design stage from multiple stakeholders, allowing them to quickly deploy their automation products, and also allowing uh, information that's bad information that's coming from sensors to be used for meaningful decision making. On top of this platform, you can then do automated solutions such as a drilling advisory system or hydraulic, hydraulic advisory system which uh, I know they're sort of unclear uh, to most of you, but what they're trying to do is get rid of these inefficiencies that are coming through uh, non-productive time, basically. So the value of uh, using this platform goes to two sets of customers. There's operators, which, uh, which will basically have a well drilled faster, and therefore they can start producing that well faster. And then there's the drilling contractors who uh, can uh, 
offer a, or sort of start charging a higher day rate for the services that they can call <coughs> to uh, deliver wells faster. Uh, value, as I mentioned, comes in two ways. There is a reduction in the total drilling time by making things more efficient, five to 10% of uh, the total drilling time that is, and then reducing the non-productive time, uh, which also accounts for 10% less in non-productive time per well, uh, summing up to a million dollars per offshore well and $40,000 per onshore well. In terms of the competitive landscape, there's, there's currently no one who's uh, offering an integrated software platform that allows the development of automated products. But for uh, automated solutions specifically, uh, we can compare ourselves to the very first alternative, which is the human driller, and then also the solutions that are being offered by uh, smaller companies, uh, as well as larger players within this space. So in terms of the features offered by the software, we're in a good position. Um, for example, ExxonMobil uh, has their own drilling advisory system, but they, they lack the fault detection system that our software would offer. Uh, or Houseman with an automated tripping system where uh, they, have, they offer an integrated software hardware platform, but they lack things like self learning capability from, uh, for different wells. Uh, just to put some numbers into perspective, uh, there's currently 443 rigs active in the U.S. right now, and that's down from 2,000 rigs last year, so the market's currently in decline. Uh, this accounts for a $13.3 billion uh, drill, annual drilling cost. There's expected to be growth moving forward, but uh, being in this downturn is actually good in terms of uh, proving the value of uh, softwares like ours. Uh, in order to bring operational efficiency for the operators and make them realize that they need to start operating lean uh, to be profitable in such a down market. Uh, we have intellectual property and that has to do with a, a sort of mathematical construct that allows combination of uh, offline simulated data with uncertain real-time data uh, for real-time decision making. Uh, the inventors are me, myself, two other students in our research group, are, and two of our supervisors, Dr. Uh, Pradeep Ashraf and Dr. Eric Donald. Uh, so the team, like I mentioned, it's me, myself, two other grad students, and uh, our supervisor, Dr. Van Ork, comes with uh, 25 years of uh, industry experience with Shell um, before he became a professor uh, at UT. Uh, our goal with R5 uh, when we started in 2015 was to push our research into uh, the industry, basically commercialize it, um, and bring value to the industry. And that's it. Questions? <coughs> data science, data analytics, um, and, and that kind of rational model to these players, can they absorb that? In other words, when you look at the market, what you need to reach them with a new data science approach, yeah. can you just sell them a thing and they're going to become data scientists? Or well, what has to change for them to be successful and for you to be successful in selling so there's, uh, well, there's data, part of it is data science, but a lot of it is uh, physics, uh, just physics itself, and uh, how you can use that physics to do things in an automated manner to make things more efficient. Now, uh, there's the aspect of pushing the automated products, but there's also uh, making those automated products work in a way where they don't cause further downtime, right? And that's, the second aspect is what we're targeting in uh, allowing an automated product to do something almost as good as a driller, but making it and doing it more consistently. Now, in terms of uh, people being comfortable um, with the automated product working next to them on the rig, it's, it's more of an adoption issue, and um, that's something where it would 
so it'll not be up to, but it will require a lot of assistance from the big players. So the operator will be doing contract with themselves, pushing that uh, to the dealer and letting them know that this automated system will be helping them not taking the job. Anybody else talk to Shell or Exxon or any of the so, uh, so we've yes, we've uh, spoken to people uh, in uh, both with the equipment manufacturers. We've spoken to NOB. Um, we haven't had not with Shell, uh, with uh, Hess, Apache, with or Fatal, and uh, we're sort of in a kind of a gray area where uh, yes, automation is definitely needed. It's good, uh, but whether or how long it will take for them to start using the software that allows them to uh, push automation, that's still sort of, we don't know whether that, whether that need is still existing. Can you watch on this side? There's a bunch of questions over here. Oh, yes, yeah, sure. Sorry. A couple things. First of all, I just want to make one kind of general. I think you said something like no one's doing this um, already. And usually in my mind, that's that's kind of a red flag. That's usually not a good thing. Like if, if no one's doing, and this is kind of a lot of teams have heard this, usually that says that, it's, you, you know, for some reason the problem isn't worth solving, whatever that might yeah. be. Um, so, you know, you're talking about aggregating data in, in a sense. And I, I wonder, is the entry time and the effort worth it in the mind of the customer to get this done? Because it sounds easy here, but there must be a reason that they're not just doing this already. So are you sure that that's really a problem that's worth solving for them? So uh, the reason I said... Uh, I said no one is doing it. I meant uh, this previous step of having a sort of a shared platform where they can develop these automated products. Uh, as I mentioned, there's lots of lots of players developing the automated products themselves. But for example, when Shell takes on the role of Three developing an automated system, uh, they lack the the agileness in being able to have all the other players who are involved. So for example, when Shell develops something, they're using an equipment that was manufactured by NOV. And getting this, this information transfer of give me the specs of your equipment so I can develop my automated system around it, uh, this is a lengthy process. Or we've heard that when they do uh, things like a, a lengthy simulation, it takes the other company about two weeks to receive the results of the simulation for them to use uh, to, to make their processes better. And this transfer of information and making it more accurate is what we're focusing on as opposed to uh, making the automated product itself, which you're right, I mean, all the, all the big players themselves are, uh, are sort of moving forward. Uh, in terms of whether they do need yeah, that, I, I, yeah, it's, yeah, that's the point. Whether they do need it, yeah. Yeah, whether they do need it, that's, uh, that's what to figure out at this point. Biggest sort of challenge to see whether they would actually start using something like this to make things go faster. So, what's the technology that you talk about collecting a bunch of data? Okay, but what does your system do? That, you know, it aggregates, but those are all very high level words. I, I yeah, I understand just, what, so, what you provide uh, as a service. Really. Well, what we think of it as so we have a lot of the back end, uh, back end sort of code and uh, sort of algorithms to make the automated technology. In terms of the software, and that's what hasn't been developed yet, it's a uh, sort of a visual programming environment. Uh, I'm not sure how many people are uh, familiar with things like LabVIEW and MATLAB and CMULING and things like that. It's, uh, those are environments where, you, where they allow you to uh, customize your control system that you design, but then they kind of limit you to, into One minute. areas where you could go wrong. And so for us, this is something, this is, could be, is a lab view for a, um, for specifically doing automation products. So you have blocks that you can connect, make an automated system, and these blocks automatically receive their uh, information that they need from the right people. So if it's a, an equipment block, this equipment block will be asking for information from the right vendor, from the right. Uh, and that's and that's a lot of this information seeking and information transfer will happen in the back end uh, by itself without people actually physically going and asking for uh, that type of information. So um, I, I found the whole idea like your phone call is my deal just came out for the day two days ago or one day. Yeah. My company is in the space, and I'm not using the system in the space. But it's something specific, right? I need these data analytics for. And I was thinking that you would discuss to some extent, which is too ambitious to do, um, but there is a benefit in using 